Kit Guru has been to Los Angeles in California with AMD. And we have the photo of the slightly dodgy diner breakfast and the monumental bill to prove it. We went to Los Angeles to learn about AMD Zen 5, which is coming at the end of this month. AMD was talking about Ryzen 300 laptops, also Ryzen 9000 desktop processors, a tiny amount about Epic server chips, and a huge amount about AI. And while I'm interested in those laptop APUs, my main focus right now is Ryzen 9000 on the desktop. We sat through a number of presentations with various members of AMD's team and we also attended some breakout sessions and a particularly interesting session where they did some overclocking with the new Ryzen 9 9950X Zen 5 16 cores, just as the name suggests. I'm going to race through some of those presentation slides and I'm going to do it at speed because at the moment it's all claims by AMD. I have no idea how much of what they're telling us is true. There's definitely some good stuff in there and the information will certainly inform my reviews of Ryzen 9000 in particular, and no doubt Ryzen AI 300 laptop processors. So let's have a look at the presentations. Zen 5 is of course CPU technology. However, we were also dealing with AMD RDNA 3.5, which is graphics technology. And the big update from our point of view was delivered by Mark Papermaster, who is Chief Technology Officer for AMD. We have some bold claims for Zen 5. More instructions delivered per cycle i.e. IPC. Dispatch and execution are expanded in width. We have doubled cache data bandwidth and we have AI acceleration. And we can see here the claims that Zen 5 has a 16% average IPC uplift over Zen 4 in a variety of apps. Clearly these are selected by AMD, have to be taken with a pinch of salt. It's not clear in this slide whether the shaded segments within the circle denote the weight of each increase over Zen 4, or it might just be pretty colouring. But these are the four areas on which AMD has concentrated. AMD is of course joined at the hip with TSMC and Zen 5 will use both their 4 nanometer and 3 nanometer processes. The big change when it comes to Ryzen 9000 desktop processors is a greater emphasis on PCI Express Gen 5. We have continuity with the AM5 platform just as we have with the current Ryzen 7000 and also of course support for DDR5 memory again as we do at present. When it comes to Strixpoint, which is the code name for third gen AMD Ryzen AI processors for laptops, they're making big claims about the AI capability of this processor, leapfrogging ahead of Intel's Meteor Lake and going head to head with Intel's upcoming Lunar Lake and also the current Qualcomm processors. We see here that 5th gen AMD Epic will be available in the second half of this year. And when you do a quick count of all the chiplets, you can see up to 192 cores and 384 threads. And again, Epic will be on both 4 nanometer and 3 nanometer. And then we get some details about where AMD is gaining these improvements. So they talk about the pipelines and increased branch prediction, also why to dispatch and execute, increased data bandwidth, and support for AVX 512 with support for 512 bit data rather than 2 times 256 bit. And a quick table showing us how Zen 3 was on 7 nanometer and 6 nanometer, Zen 4 and Zen 4C on 5 and 4 nanometer, Zen 5 and 5C will be on 4 nanometer and 3 nanometer, and in the future, surprise, surprise, we'll have Zen 6 and Zen 6C. Let's take a pause from the PowerPoint and turn to some actual products. And we're going to start in the AMD showcase room with the ASUS ZenBook S16. Designed for 1080p gaming, this is powered by the AMD Ryzen AI9HX370 processor. And isn't that just a mouthful? 11 millimeters in thickness, although quite where they measure that, we're not sure and it weighs in at one and a half kilos, which is fairly light. There's an emphasis on the materials they use, which is a high-tech ceramic cord, would you believe, Ceraluminum. It has a 16-inch screen, which is 3K resolution and 120 hertz, and uses OLED technology. Moving on to the ASUS TUF A14 laptop, this is intended for 1440p gaming. It has the same AMD processor, a Ryzen AI 9HX370, and add in RTX 4060 graphics. Similar weight, 1.46 kilos, but thicker because of the cooling for the graphics card, 16.9 mil. 
And then we turn to PCs. We have a CyberPower Ryzen desktop PC for 1080p gaming. The processor here is a rather chunky Ryzen 9 9950X and the graphics card RX 7900XTX. Another Ryzen desktop, this by iBuyPower. The case is a height Y70. Graphics, AMD Radeon RX 7900XTX and the motherboard here and a Zeus Strix 670EA gaming Wi-Fi. The next laptop is an HP Omnibook, and you'll note the emphasis on AI, and also Copilot Plus from Microsoft. The processor here, AMD Ryzen AI9 300 series, so they're not telling us which specific model. There's no mention of graphics, however, the chassis is 16.5 mil in thickness, so we can guess there's likely to be add-in graphics and extra cooling. CyberPower Ryzen desktop, However, this is more of a workstation. So it's running the Ryzen 9 9700X processor, but the graphics are Radeon Pro W7900. The motherboard, MSI X670E Gaming Plus Wi-Fi. So a slightly curious combo of hardware and 64 gigabytes of DDR5 memory. This laptop is the MSI Stealth A16, and it's all about AI and large language models. Processor, AMD Ryzen AI9HX370, and that's all they tell us. A Zeus ROG Zephyrus 16. Again, is an AMD Ryzen AI9HX370. Add-in graphics are RTX 4060, which is what we'd expect in this size of ROG Zephyrus notebook. And we arrive at some processors. And as we can see, the Ryzen 9 9950X by eye looks exactly like a Ryzen 9 7950X. And that brings us neatly to the new Ryzen 9000 processors that were announced at Computex just a few weeks ago. Still using the AM5 platform with DDR5 memory and an increased emphasis on PCI Express Gen 5. We've got four models at launch, 16, 12, 8 and 6 cores, and you can see the direct correlation between these and the existing Ryzen 7000 models. You will note there is no mention of 3D models for the time being. Also, if you go to the right hand column, the 16 core maintains the 170 watt TDP. However, the other three models have a reduced TDP compared to the existing Ryzen 7000s. AMD picked some benchmarks and in those benchmarks, their new processors do well. But note, they are comparing the new 12 core Ryzen 9 9900X against Intel's Core i9-14900K, not the top of the line 16 core 9950X. They're confident the 12 core can do battle with 4900K. Similarly, Ryzen 7 9700X, the 8 core, up against Core i7 14700K, and Ryzen 5 9600X, up against Core i5 14600K. On the next slide, we see faster than first gen AMD 3D vCache while using less power. On average, we are told the 65 watt AMD Ryzen 9700X is faster than the 105 watt Ryzen 7 5800X 3D in gaming. They are comparing the new Zen 5 non 3D part against the Zen 3 3D part, rather than, for example, the new Zen 5 non 3D against the Zen 4 3D. AMD tells us their new processors have a 15% improvement in thermal resistance, and that allows a reduction of seven degrees Celsius at the same TDP. We asked what this meant. This is not a thinning of the silicon or a change in the heatsink. It apparently involves moving around components and spreading out the hot spots. Also, they may have moved the positions of the thermal sensors. And here we see how the new processors line up with their lower power and higher performance. Overclocking enhancements. The emphasis here is on support for faster DDR5 up to DDR5 8000. Also Ryzen Master software includes a new curve shaper facility. Precision Boost Overdrive, either in your BIOS or in Ryzen Master, has a one-click overclocking feature to make your life easier. And AMD is keen to emphasize the longevity of their platforms. AM4 lasted for nearly nine years. AM5 should last for a good few years to come. 
And here we have a lineup of the new 800 series chipsets that we don't expect to see until September. Top of the line is AMD X870E, no surprises there. And then we have the AMD X870, which goes directly head to head with X670, but adds USB 4. The AMD B850 is no surprise, but the AMD B840 that's a bit of an oddball, and this presumably is going to be aimed at system integrators. Naturally, AMD had to talk briefly about AI, and then we move on to box shots of the new processors coming on the 31st of July. However, we're not yet sure when the reviews will go out. And then AMD showed us the performance of their new Ryzen 9 9950X. We're looking at Cinebench R23 figures, so the top row of the chart. And you'll note the current world record 50,843, uh, stock settings 41,924. We need to be clear that AMD is doing instantaneous runs, so a single run through the benchmark which takes but a few seconds, whereas KitGuru uses the sustained 10 minute mode, in other words no boosting. And you can see in my most recent review, Ryzen 9 7950X scored 36,369 just to give you some context. Core i9-13900K, which is very similar to 14900K, 39,000. Returning to AMD's figures, so the stock performance they're claiming is just under 42,000. They showed us some memory tweaking facilities in the new Ryzen Master, and these bumped up the scores from 42,000 to just under 44,000, and then close to 45,000. I have to say, that's impressive provided we can replicate figures anything close to that. As a finale, they ran some LN2 extreme cooling. We heard them call out negative 90 degrees Celsius, but I'm quite sure some extra pours lowered the temperature even further. All right, negative 90, we'll give it a try. And that run came in at a score of 53,604. I have to admit that AMD overclocking demo impressed me and I'm all the more keen now to get my hands on my review samples and to get on with benchmarking for myself. Ryzen 9000, certainly interesting. AMD laptops have been a winner for at least the past year. Epic, that's outside of our area. And when it comes to AI, we can park that thought until Microsoft sorts out Windows 11 and Copilot Plus just a little better. My immediate task, AMD Ryzen 9000. In particular, that 16 core 9950X.